All right, good evening, everybody. I want to call this September 26, 2022 meeting of the Lake Havasu City Parks and Recreation Advisory Board um, meeting to order. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, with the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, roll call. Present. <laughs> little switch so you guys got it. <laughs> Kyler Cox. Here. Shannon Murray. Ashley Pasquale. Here. Alex Ross. He's on. Alex, can you hear us? Alex? Alex, looks like you're unmuting yourself, but we can't hear anything. Yeah. Philip Shannon? Todd Taylor? And Alex Wolf? Alexis Present. Wolf, I'm sorry. You're okay. Present. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Natalie Strader? Here. And Council Member Michelle Lynn? Here. Thank you. Let's move on to the call of the public. We will now have an open call to the public for citizens wishing to address the board on issues within the jurisdiction of this board. Your comments must be limited to three minutes or less. If you wish to address an item already on today's agenda, you should wait until the item is announced for a public hearing. At the conclusion of the open of the call to the public, individual members of the board may respond to criticism made by those who address the board, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. However, board members cannot discuss or take legal actions on matters not already on the agenda. So if you're interested in speaking during the call of the public, make your way to the podium and state your name for the record, please. Sorry, I don't think your microphone was on. There you go. Oh, excellent. Hi. Would there you, you like me to start over? Yeah, go ahead and start over so we can have you for the record. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, I'm Bonnie Toy, and I would like to address, uh, I believe that the rate of the aquatic center, the cost of the aquatic center is too high for someone who has multiple children that would like to take their children to the aquatic center in the summertime. And so I constantly go to the city council meeting and request that the lower rate would be lowered because while it may be doable for somebody to take a child there once, if they have one child, but when they start to have multiple children, more than one child that they're trying to take on a consistent daily basis, if possible, it be starts to become too costly for them to do that. And I would just really like it to encourage the aquatic center consider lowering the cost of the entry during the summer, just the vacation time for the public school time, just during that time frame, and at a reasonable cost where if I have four kids that I need to take to the aquatic center every day so they can have fun and play, then I could afford to do that. But it at, you know, a dollar, two dollars a day with, um, if I, if it was a dollar a day with four kids, that's four dollars a day. If it's five days a week, you know, that that's doable for somebody who doesn't have that money. But if it's five dollars a kid and I have to take four children there every single day, and I don't have the funds to barely afford one day, then it becomes unattainable. Now I can never take my children to the aquatic center. And um, it's just not, kind of not cool. You know, they really should be able to enjoy the aquatic center during the summer months. And they shouldn't have to worry, parents should not have to worry about 
breaking the bank just for their children to have fun that's had an already taxpayer funded adventure. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Toy. Anybody else? Okay, seeing none, we'll close to the call to the public and move on to the approval of the minutes of the August 22nd, 22 uh, Parks, and Rec Parks and Recreation Board meeting. Looking for a motion. I move to approve minutes. I have a second. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the, the meeting minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All righty. And next, item 6.1 for the communication announcements and staff report. Director Keene. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Parks and Recreation Department is collecting bags of individually wrapped candy now through October 14th. Candy donors will receive a complimentary pass to utilize the Aquatic Center. Passes are valid for one drop-in program, exercise class, lap swim, open swim, open gym, and expire December 31st, 2022. The candy will be used during the fall fun fair. Uh, we'd like to thank the Elks Club. They're currently sponsoring soccer shoots at the after school program. Concerts in the park will begin on Fridays in October from 6 to 9 p.m. at London Bridge Beach. The Fall Fun Fair is on October 15th from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Rotary Park Ball Fields. The Youth Talent Show is on October 27th at 6 p.m. at the stage under the London Bridge. Lake Havasu High School home swim meets will be taking place on September 29th, October 7th, October 18th, and October 20th. The after school program will have a, uh, a swim time on October 6th. We are also currently working on a youth open gym basketball October 19th from 4 to 7 p.m. for ages 12 to 17. The River Cities United Way Senior Health Fair will be held in the community center on October 12th. Western Welcome Bunko will be held on October 17th. A Veteran Stand Down Resource Fair on October 22nd. The Vitalant Blood Drive will be held October 24th through the 27th. And the Arizona Collectibles and Firearms Gun Show October 29th and 30th. Out in the parks, we have lots of events coming up. A Shine the Light Ceremony under the London Bridge on September 30th. Save a Life Domestic Violence Awareness Walk will be held at Rotary Park, Ramada B on October 1st. A breast Cancer Awareness Walk will be held on at the London Bridge Beach Stage also on October 1st. A Sovereign of the Street competition, that is a scooter competition, will be held at Tunnel Memorial Skate Park on October 1st. IJSBA World Finals Freestyle will be held in the Bridgewater Channel under the bridge on October 8th. An ISF Scooter World Championship will be held in Tunnels Memorial Skate Park October 13th through the 16th. Relics and Rods Run to the Sun Cruise Night will be on McCulloch Boulevard October 20th. And Relics and Rods Run to the Sun Car Show will be on Bridgewater Links Golf Course October 21st and 22nd. The London Bridge Beard and Mustache Contest will be held at the stage under the London Bridge on October 22nd. There will be a Piccadilly Pickleball Tournament at Dick Sant Park on October 25th. Walk Away From Drugs will be holding, holding their event on London Bridge Beach Stage on October 26th. And Fright Night will be held on McCulloch Boulevard on October 31st. Um, a couple of internal projects that we've worked on in our parks department is out at the island ball field, the football field. Um, some exterior work was done on the snack bar, shade structure, announcer, and announcer's box. Uh, we are still working on the fencing and bleachers uh, will be the next part of, of that project. Um, in Rotary Park, uh, Ramada B, the soft play surface, uh, was approved at our last council meeting to be replaced. That work will get started next week and should take approximately one week to uh, 
to remove that and install a new soft play surface. Um, that concludes my director's report. With that, I'll take any questions. Questions for the director? Yes, I have one. I'm sorry, but what is um, this shine of light ceremony under the London Bridge? Yeah, I, I am not exactly sure. It, it's a special event that um, okay. that is taking place under the bridge. It's not an event that the Parks and Recreation Department is putting on. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I just have a couple comments. Um, obviously, we're getting into the event season here in Lake Havasu. So, um, again, you guys are going to be busy, and we appreciate you and your staff. Um, I think this is one of the big reasons so many people live and love Lake Havasu is because of the events. Um, so I just definitely want to say good job to you guys and your staff and keep up the good work. A um, couple things, like I said last time, that fall fun fair is a huge, a huge asset to this community. Um, I know it's a lot of work from your staff, but it's definitely a great thing. It's a great safe environment for these kids to attend. So those that haven't been, um, you know, take your, take your young children down to this event. You'll see it. It's, 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 it's safe. It's secluded. Um, and, and it's, it really, it really gets a lot of involvement from the community. So it's, it's definitely a good thing. Um, same thing with that fright night on McCulloch. I'm glad that that's continuing again. It's this town is difficult with its layout to safely trick or treat, I would say. Um, so it's definitely a good thing I, uh, that fright night again, seeing it, you know, as an adult and being there as a kid as well, you know, it's a, it's a great thing and a great way to keep, to keep our kids safe. Um, the island football field, you know, you brought that up, you know, you know, I was a proponent in trying to make some improvement to that field as soon as I got on this board and, and we're getting there. And, you know, I know that it, it's noticed. I know it's a lot of work and that that field is dated, um, but you've made some, you and your staff made some huge improvements and we appreciate it. So this season, the Lake Havasu Youth Football Chiefs program um, did a River Cities conference, whereas some other seasons they were involved in, in Vegas and Phoenix. So we've had all the local cities come down and, and play games, home games here at our Lake Havasu field. And we've got nothing but compliments. Um, we went to a handful of the other fields and um, our field is finally up to par with what the other cities have. So um, just this, this last home game, we, we had a lot of compliments on how good that snack bar looks and how good um, the field's looking and, and the scoreboard and all that stuff. So great job. Keep it up. I know there's still some work to do down there for sure, um, but it's, it's a great job. Not to mention that I'll throw this out there. Um, the seven U division, which is the five, six and seven year old chiefs are completely undefeated this year, um, have won every game they played and actually have not allowed any other team, Parker, Kingman, Yuma to score any points at all. So it looks nice when we have a nice field and we're an undefeated team. So great job. Last thing is I hope Mike that you, uh, join in on that beard mustache contest cause you're looking pretty good. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Go ahead. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I just realized something. So do does the Parks and Recreation Department field all of the event requests and handle that? Because I noticed like under the London Bridge and McCulloch, which is that true? Or are you sharing that with us as FYI? We are sharing that information. Oh. All the event processes run through the city manager's office and Anthony Kozlowski now. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. I was going to give you kudos for managing all that too, but thanks for the information. Anybody else? Okay. Um, seeing none, we'll move on to uh, item 7.1, discussion of the downtown Catalyst project. Okay. Thank you. So we're kind of ending the, or getting close to the, the end of the finish line here on, on this project. Um, the 90% submittals will um, be given to us at the end of October. They're shooting for October 25th currently. Um, with that, we will receive, uh, or that will allow us to go and get the pricing estimates of what the, uh, the project itself will cost. At that point, we're looking to do a presentation to council um, either in November or December based on holidays. Um, traditionally, there's only one uh, council meeting in November and one council meeting in December. So we'll look to get on that agenda um, and have Dick Studio come out and give a presentation to council regarding the uh, that project and their design for it. Um, one thing that we have started to look at a little bit is um, 
the the amount of grass that is in that um, circle uh, and, and the design and what would it take to make that artificial turf? What are the pros and cons of that um, as we go through our water conservation measures? And, and um, is uh, natural turf the best way to go um, for that project? So we're looking into some, um, again, pros and cons to having artificial turf there, or is there another material that would suit that area better um, as opposed to natural turf? Um, that's kind of where we're at in the project. Um, so with that, I'll take any additional questions or comments. Council Member Lynn. Yeah, I have a couple questions. So I'm trying to separate myself from being a voting council member and being your liaison. Um, so some of you are really, really new to the board and haven't been part of the process of how we got where we are here. So some of the questions that, that I've been, have uh, had from constituents on the Downtown Chaos Project that I just wanted to make aware to you. And I do understand that I don't wanna step on Mike's toes. So I did go to the city manager to ask him the right route to do this. So I don't wanna be asking you questions as a council member would be asking during a council session. But these are some just some questions that I just wanna put out there for you guys to think about and digest as you go forward. Because you are gonna to present to the council and I wanna support what you put in front. But at the end of the day, it's it, it may not be a yes. So I just want you to know that I, I'm on your side, but I want you to know that I have some concerns. So um, one of the first questions was the grass versus the turf and what that looks like. Have you all seen what the actual, look, the presentation looks like with the circular? Everybody's seen that? Okay. Um, the second thing is there's some issues with parking downtown, especially now that, it, that the council has passed that the density level down there is gonna be increased. So there's some parking issues. So we're wondering what you think about that. Um, possible charging stations for electric cars in that area because we don't have any currently down there. Um, the thoughts on the whole entire area being grass and if they're, you're thinking about doing vending, if you wanna do concrete slabs, that could also be additional overflow parking in that area. Um, areas for pickup with the new transportation system down there. Um, the bridge, we haven't really talked about the bridge and that's a big thing, crossing over. And let's see what else did I have in here. The shrubbery, if you, in that design, there's a lot of shrubbery, a lot of green foliage in that area and we're talking a lot with water conservation and what that looks like. So these are just kind of some of the concerns that have been addressed to me and going forward, that design doesn't meet all those requirements. So I just wanted to put that out to you so that when you present to the council, I don't want you to be surprised on what my questions will be or where did that come from? And so I just wanted to put that out there for you to have a discussion. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns, want to address council member Lynn's questions? Vice Chair, I do. Um, I appreciate the deeper look into, especially with water conservation and costs and upkeep and um, usability of looking at, and do you know, off the top of your head, it's okay, probably not, but it'd be fun if you do, the actual, in that design, that, that finalish design, what's that space of turf? Yeah, I don't have the square okay. footage off okay. the top of my head. Um, just in talking with the consultant, to, just to throw this out there, um, the projects that they have worked on in the past, uh, artificial turf is traditionally five times as much as natural turf. Um, now, again, that's an upfront cost. Um, there is still some maintenance that needs to be done on artificial turf, but obviously not as intensive as um, natural turf. So you can recoup some of those costs there. Um, we would save water during the majority of the year. However, there may be times where you would need to spray down the artificial turf to keep it cool as well. Mm -hmm. So just some information that the consultant uh, provided as well. Thank you. Um, I 
don't know how much this board has any input on this or this process, um, but I do just appreciate looking at that. And if they're in your next phase when you go out to get pricing, if that's a question you can ask about, can they project water usage? And then you have more of a complete package to look at um, versus the cost of the artificial turf. And then also looking at um, native uh, plants and things like that that wouldn't require uh, water or as much water. Um, and yeah, the, the bridge has kind of been like a footnote. Um, but will that be included in part of the, des uh, pricing? The bridge was not included in the design phase. It, uh, the footings basically that left were the area was left clear to be able to, um, to provide design in the future um, for that bridge. Um, just based on the limitations, we knew financially that that bridge would, would take all of the resources that were there. Um, it was determined that it, it's not really far to walk around the bottom of McCulloch and back up the, the walking path um, to Mesquite parking lot. Yeah, I agree with that. Thanks, thank you for bringing your, those questions forward too. Anybody else? Um, I have a question. Uh, being one of the relatively new board members, um, so I apologize if this question isn't appropriate here, or, um, but what happens if it is not approved? Um, where, where does this money go? What does the project just stop? And I apologize if this has been covered, but... No, that's a great question. Uh, if council were to decide that the cost of the project or the, um, the, the community needs have changed uh, since the design started, um, which was well over a year ago, that um, that this is not a project that they want to push forward. Those funds will will stay there, and we'll we'll come up with um, something that that meets the um, the request of council and the direction that that they give. Um, as far as the turf is concerned, um, I know this will be brought up in detail. But um, it, it would be more than water difference um, to have artificial turf because you would have um, weed, <laughs> weed maintenance and um, just general maintenance of regular grass that should all be considered in comparing it to turf. Anybody else? Good. Um, Council, member, Council Member Lynn, I'm sorry. When you mentioned parking, I, I missed the part. I, I know you said parking, but what was the issue with that again? So just recently, the um, council passed what our density will look like in the downtown area and the growth of how we're going to build out. And so there's a lot of issues right now where that parking will be. So I, we do have that parking lot on Mesquite, um, but we're just kind of, you know, talking about what that would look like if there was additional parking on that area for like special events for when they put vending trucks down there and it could be overflow parking. So it could be multi-use pads down there. So that was just a thought. I guess what I'm really trying to get the consensus so that I know as a council member, like, are you all on board with this specific design? What's been presented? I missed the last meeting, so I apologize. Like, I guess I would like to hear what your thoughts are. Like, do you all think it meets the needs of what you've been told by, by your constituents? Like when you're out doing your research, do you feel that those needs are being met on that property? And I think that's what I'm trying to get from you. Sure. So, you know, I can speak. I, I haven't been here the longest. I know Ashley and, and Sherry have been here for quite a bit of time and a couple others as well. Um, I know that when I went to a couple of the town hall meetings and a couple of the other meetings, this design does meet I guess the majority of what people were looking for, um, you know, it's, it's hard to say because, you know, we, we also did kind of have a direction we were going. So we didn't, there was never an option of, well, do you want a parking lot or do you want to park? It was, if we build a, a park or whatever we're going to call it, what would you like to see? So that kind of the, what we have now is the finalized version, in my opinion, of what, what everybody wanted with the direction we gave them. So again, it's hard, it's hard to really, I guess, answer that question in my opinion, I guess, because again, like I said, I, we were never like, it was never, never an option of, well, like this or that. It was, if we did this, what would you want to see? 
Does that answer that question? Absolutely. And that's where I, you know, we're not, we've only put in $180,000 into it, correct? This project's gonna go over a million dollars. So if that means that the board is heard differently and the dynamics of downtown have changed, you know, this is where the board still has, you know, the choices to say this is a different direction and I don't wanna override what Mike said because he's been given direction to go ahead, but I'd like to hear what those thoughts are from you. Like if you're like, well, this isn't what we like, this is we want parking before we go in and then this is put in front of the council the same as you saying, here, vote yes or no on this. Because I'd like to hear if this is not the direction that you're thinking, I would like to know that. Is it gonna change the fact of what's already being presented? No, but at least we're hearing from the board what your thoughts are. Because at the end of the day, whatever comes from here is gonna be the consensus that this board is presenting to the council. Are you, do you, are you comfortable as what you're presenting to the council is what is going forward? Does that make sense? It does, yes. Sherry, go ahead. Um, so what I, and I think others have been waiting for on this board is cost. Um, <laughs> we can design anything we want, but when it comes down to, well, how much is this going to cost? That's where the decision process really has to take over because just what you're saying, if the cost is greater than we think it should be, and we're not getting everything we want, like adequate parking, then, then that's when this project really becomes something we can really discuss. But until we have costs in front of us, we, we don't have those answers. Go ahead. I don't have a response to that. I was gonna bring up something else. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Councilwoman, I think that through this process has been extravagant and drawn out and um, some of the needs have likely changed, but I think that the concept of having a downtown park and gathering space is still what I hear um, wanted and desired and will be used in the future. I have um, personally, this hasn't been discussed by the board, but if we were asked about other uses, a parking lot would be way down on my priority list and within the groups that I talk with. That's my opinion. Uh, and I'll just segue from her as well. I, I know that uh, not necessarily my opinion, but from when I was talking to people during these town halls, um, you know, the event space is what people were looking for. Um, from what I gather, they wanted a place, I mean, we're, we're already doing it. It's already essentially an event space. Now it's just not very, um, I guess, usable. It's just a, a grass parking lot instead of a, you know, a, a finished out parking lot. So I, that was always what I've heard from, from the meetings is, is they, they wanted a place to actually hold events, whether it be the food trucks or whether it be, you know, the swap meets or the, you know, the craft fairs, things like that. They just wanted a more organized place to do that. Um, to touch on a couple of the questions that you talked about, like, you know, my opinion for the grass versus turf, I, I would just say that it'd become, it would come down to cost and, and what staff I think would elect would be the best if we did go that route. Um, you know, the electric car chargers, um, again, I, I don't know, some of these things, the electric car chargers and the bridge, I just don't know that that's anything that we were able to answer as, as the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, because that's not within the scope of what we have been provided as far as our budget, right? If I would say if for us that bridge was super important, but we were kind of given a very small budget and to work with, which was the winnings from the American America's Best Communities Fund, um, and that bridge just didn't didn't include wasn't what didn't fit into that budget. So I think as much as the bridge was a priority and we did hear as a priority, you know, the priority that we heard was also the bathrooms and and kind of that event space. So that's why I think the board as a whole and, and what we heard the bridge kind of got kicked out because it wasn't necessarily that priority when it came to the cost. Um, you know, transport pickup, I know the, you know, the, the city's working on the, the new, the new re redesigned transport, uh, division. I, I think that would be a great thing to have some kind of stop there or some kind of amenities for that. Um, but a couple of the other things, like I said, parking, you know, the electric car chargers, I just don't know how that would be feasible to do in the space that we have. Just, just my opinion. Anybody else have anything you want to add? Now's the time. I 
I think it's just important too, and I think we all kind of think this being in government or working with that, um, being aware of, again, cost. Um, with recession going on, things like that, um, I think people are looking for government agencies and things to be good stewards of, of dollars. So I agree um, with Sherry. I think you know, knowing what costs are, knowing, okay, where does this come in at the budget? Where does it exceed? Um, that to me, that's one of the main things. I I love having events. I love having all of that. I'm also a realist and knowing that it's tight for people. It's hard for people. And again, just wanting to be good stewards of. I know this isn't per se tax dollars, but um, but that's going to be one of the main things for me. I think too. So. Um, so again, I think Councilmember Lynn's looking for somewhat of a consensus. So. Um, Again, it'd be nice to hear opinion from others on the board as well of what they think about the design. If it is something that you that you think that we as a board should um, move forward to present, or if we maybe don't agree, does anybody have any thoughts or opinions on on that on the specific design and the use? I think that this catalyst is a really great product, and I feel comfortable just presenting this because I think it adds a lot to the space. Um, I know that you know as a teenager and just having friends and finding places to go hang out on the weekend or after school. Main Street is definitely one of the first places we think of just because of the dynamic and just our town culture. So I think having a catalyst there would draw a lot of kids, not just um, families and events, but even, you know, older kids who want somewhere to hang out that's safe. You know, downtown's this pretty safe area and things to do. And I think it just adds a lot to that dynamic down there. Thank you. All right, I'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. So I agree that it, it's a, an area that we're already using for events. There's already events being held there. Um, so having something a little more established and easy to use, user-friendly bathrooms, um, I think would enhance it. Um, I'm just curious what the difference would be as far as water conservation goes with what we're currently seeing with grass being watered there now compared to once the project is done. Is there any real difference in the amount of water being used? Or is the idea we're trying to reduce it overall by replacing the turf? We will certainly see a, a savings just in what we currently have because the, the footprint of the turf will be being reduced to start with um, from the, the outskirts. Um, so we will see a water savings there. Um, but looking forward, you know, is is what we're, we're putting in there uh, the most efficient use. Um, so that's where we'll look at some artificial turf as well as, you know, are there other um, surfaces that would work better uh, in, in that space to, to allow for some water conservation. Um, turf, natural turf is very inexpensive. Uh, so that's going to certainly be a driver. And, and I agree, we're all kind of waiting for the cost to see what, what will this truly look like. Um, and, and until we get those, um, there are a lot of questions and okay, if we did this, not that, what would that look like? We've all talked here many times um, uh, regarding phasing um, and is this going to have to be a phased project due to the costs? Um, we just don't know until we see what those costs look like and, and that number is coming, so. Well, and I think that's something that, um, you know, you know me, I, I don't like the phases. I, I think it gets lost in translation. Any project that you look in the history of, of any city any government, it get, the phases get lost in translation and where we started and where we ended is not what the vision was. Now, again, I get there has to be change and you know, there, it's ever, ever evolving, but you know, phases, I just, like I said, I'm not a fan, especially for the small city we are, we are in right now. But um, you know, another, another thing that I wanted to bring up is when we talked to the public during these town halls, it got brought up to do, you know, essentially just a concrete or an asphalt kind of parking lot slash event space. And it was not well received. Um, it was, it was probably, it, it angered a couple of people that I actually talked to. They said the last thing they want is another parking lot to go walk around. And, and one of the comments that got made to me was, you know, we have plenty of parking lots to do these. We don't need to build another one to do that. Now that was their opinion when we were talking about the event space, not necessarily the need for downtown parking. So, you know, again, take that, take that as you will with that. They just, they didn't want, you know, we, it was just like the bowl when the bowl was, you know, the grass bowl down at Rotary and that got filled in. And then there was talks of putting the, the skate park there. I mean, the city was, the citizens were up in arms because they didn't want to lose that small grass space that we did have. So when the, the same thing kind of got brought up of, hey, let's just do a concrete flat pad to do these events. That was, again, at least the opinions I got from the public during these town halls was in a, a hard no. 
Anybody else? Councilmember Linda, that answer your question? Yeah, I, okay. like I said, I just want to make sure that what you're presenting to the council that you're all comfortable with that and that it's a consensus. At the end of the day, what each council member, what we how we vote, you know, that'll that'll say. But I just want to know. I, I'm sorry, I really missed the last meeting of what your opinions were on it, and I, I got your opinions, so that's what I wanted to get today. Thank you. There's no other call or no other comments or questions. This is a um, public hearing. So I'd like to open the public hearing. Anybody in the public would like to speak on this on this matter? Hey, how you doing? My name is still Bonnie Toy. Um, <laughs> wait, I'm not gonna fall. I had a question. I um, of well, one you haven't put up there what you're looking at, so I haven't really seen the whole thing, but. Do you have space for balloons to launch there or how will that work? And other, I mean, when you're planning an event place like that for a city that really loves its hot air balloon people, they really enjoy having that space to launch. And I don't know that that's available. Will that still be available for them? Director King? Yes, I do believe that balloons will still be able to launch out of that space. And, well, I, and I agree. I think the, the design, and, and I apologize it's not up, but it's, it's, fair, it's a fairly open design. There's some, some brush and trees around the perimeter, but the, the main open part of that, the design is pretty, is pretty flat and open and still grassy and with some concrete features. Also, I really, um, just so you do know, that parking does really stink in that whole area, and you're going to add an event place with limited parking is not going to be fun last year was it um or no maybe it was this year in february i believe they had the i don't know winterfest and i went to winterfest on my electric scooter because my mobility scooter because it was easier than trying to walk up there which i would have done before but um <laughs> on Swanson and you guys, I don't know who's in charge of those kind of events or when you're having Fright Night event, the, um, and since you're having, you know, creating a whole event, event venue, you really need to know that there will be people in areas who are walking maybe not in the area that you're thinking so I was crossing Swanson and almost got hit like by two or three cars on Swanson and Smoke Tree because there was no one. I mean, that that whole Swanson and you know how Swanson gets stopped. They put up stop signs extra that aren't in normal places and then all the traffic is going down Swanson. Yeah. It's not fun when you almost get hit by cars and you know it could have been avoided if there was a crossing guard at the stop sign. So I don't know how you um, address the safety for people who are pedestrians or even cyclists, bicyclists, whatever. I wish swimmers were protected from cars too. That, that was a joke. But yes, are you going to be able to provide um, safety measures for pedestrians more than just some little crosswalk? Sure. So I and Director King could probably help me answer this, but um, that I believe falls under the streets department, which would be a different department than what we, um, I guess, advise. Um, Director King, am I correct in that? Yes, uh, when, when we go to closed streets or, and or um, it's usually um, the streets department and or um, our police department would handle the, the safety measures from that. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yes and no, actually, I guess I really didn't think about it before, but seriously, if you're going to be having events right there in that area, you have McCulloch open, you have Mesquite open, you have Swanson open, and right there on Curio, there will be people who are trying to cross. You are going to have extra people walking during that time. So yeah, that's something I don't know if you guys considered in your design process, but it might be something you need to now. Sorry. I think that answers, or that might be the end of my comment. Great, thank you. 
Anybody else in the public that would like to address the board? All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing on item 7.1. All right, moving on to item 7.2, discussion for the Aquatic Center HVAC project update. Director Keene. Sure. Uh, again, this project is kind of just getting started. Uh, the engineering staff is reviewing some middles on equipment. Uh, so those are, are getting finalized. The um, company called Comfort Systems uh, will be mobilizing on November 1st to come over to Lake Havasu City. Uh, they will start their work shortly after there then. And the, um, we're going to do a lot of the work, uh, as I mentioned at the last meeting, um, during our annual shutdown, uh, which begins November 19th. Uh, some of that work will include the duct work in the locker rooms, uh, installing some of the um, structural steel to house the new units on the roof. Um, so all of that can can get done while the, the pool area is closed and we won't have to um, have as much interruption uh, to our, our normal programming as we go. Um, there are a couple units that are 32 weeks out uh, for delivery time just due to supply chain issues. So those units, uh, again, they're trying to get ordered as quickly as possible as soon as the submittals are finished um, to be able to get those here um, as soon as they can and, uh, and up on the roof and be able to work on that project. So there's not a huge update there, um, just kind of still in the beginning phases of that project, um, but we'll start seeing work uh, in, in the month of November. Great, thank you. Uh, questions or comments for the director? All right, seeing none, this is a public hearing. Anybody from the public would like to speak on this item? All right, seeing none, that was easy. Move on to item 7.3, discussion of the pickleball, pickleball court project update, Director King. Thank you. Uh, so the area of Dixant Park, uh, the major grading has been completed. Uh, some of the sidewalk and staircases uh, and walkway areas have been built. Um, we are in a slight delay waiting on some fence posts. Um, there, again, with the supply chain, uh, they, there's a, a slight delay on that. However, um, the uh, general contractor does believe it will not affect the overall end date. Uh, of the project that there's some some time that they can work in there and, and get a, other things accomplished while they're waiting on these uh, and get that uh, still hit that target date. Um, so that's kind of my update of where we're at there. Um, again, just, just moving forward. Um, that target date still is December 14th. Um, so we're working closely uh, with them on that date as well as with the Pickleball Association on, um, you know, they, they do have, as I mentioned earlier, the Piccadilly uh, tournament on October 25th. So just ways to make sure that everyone is safe around the construction site. Um, so uh, things are moving forward there though. Great, and I'll just, as always, anytime this gets brought up, but just thank you to that donor that's making this happen. I mean, we, would, we wouldn't be able to do this in, in this community without people like them. And again, what a huge asset to this to the city. And, it's going to be a great project, so we appreciate that. Um, anybody have any questions, comments? Yeah, Ms. Pesco. Thank you. And just to clarify, the um, donation amounts are funding this entire project? Yes, 100% of, of this project. Okay. Does it have any impact on the existing ball fields or playground? And I think I asked last time about there was no expansion to the parking situation there. Um, with the last eight that was we designed and, and, and built up there uh, in that upper area, there is an additional parking lot um, that was graded out. We are in the process of doing some curbing up there and then um, the millings that actually from the McCulloch uh, Boulevard paving project, uh, some of them are sitting up there and, and will be laid out and um, smoothed down to make a, a parking lot up there. So we will have expanded the, the, the parking uh, uh, lot from the from where it was of just the lower lot. Um, and hopefully that will alleviate 
uh, any of those parking issues that do show up, um, especially when there's tournaments up there or, or game days. Um, it will, the courts themselves will not affect um, any of the ball field operations um, with the exception of additional people around. And the playground is? Yes, the playground is still there. Yep. yep. Okay. And then did you say the entrance, that driveway, it was widened or will be? Um, we're going to look at if there's some opportunities to. Um, that is a very narrow driveway to get up there. Um, and I, I know certain sections of it are painted red, but in all reality, it should all be painted red because uh, it is very narrow and, and we really don't want people parking uh, on that stretch to get in. Um, and uh, just for uh, you know, obvious safety reasons, getting in and out, um, if we did have to get a a fire truck or an ambulance up there that, that could uh, pose problems. So um, we, we do believe that the, the new upper lot will, will mostly take care of that concern. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right. Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to, like to address the board on this topic? You sure? <laughs> All right. All right. Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to future discussion items. Does anybody like to add an or discuss or add an item to discuss at a later meeting? Ms. Butler, go ahead. Yes. Um, actually, I would like to um, discuss fees at the aquatic center, and I'd already said that before Miss Bonnie walked in here tonight. <laughs> But that just helps, okay? Um, I think it's something we should address as a board. Okay, we'll just need a second for Ms. Butler's topic. I'll second that. All right, we have a second. Dr. Keene, you good with that? Okay, any other items? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to future meetings. Future meeting dates are October 24th and November 28th. All righty, thank you. All right. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. Go ahead. With We can probably discuss this at our October meeting, but um, if we, so maybe this is a future discussion item or not, but um, we might not need a November meeting, especially being the Monday after the holiday and what that means for staff to get an agenda together that week and all that, if there's nothing to discuss. Director King? Yes, we can definitely look at the November and December because um, that will end up falling right in between the, the holidays of Christmas and New Year's um, of what that looks like. And if we need to, to make some adjustments there, maybe we hold, yeah, we can discuss on that. Okay, good point, thank you. All right, uh, nothing else, I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you everybody.